Thomas Eriksson from Stars on Sports. Welcome to a new episode of 360 Hockey Skills Tutorials. This episode will give you insights and knowledge on why you should work with control on your weak side. The definition of your weak sides is having control on your backhand side and behind the body. Having control on your weak side will impact multiple areas of your game, such as speed with the puck, shooting, quick releases, receiving passes, multiple areas that are very important in game situations. I will give you a number of different perspectives on why it's important to work on your weak sides. You will also get five unique drills improving your mobility and your skills on your weak sides. Before we move on, please subscribe to our channel in order to get more training tutorials from us at StarZone. We meet more than a thousand players from 30 countries on our camps, academies and individual coaching programs. Having the possibility to meet a lot of players gives us lots of data regarding the skills and different aspects of the game. This also gives us a good view of the coming generation of hockey player. What skills you need to have and how you need to train. The first test data that is really interesting is from our own academy and historical test data from players and camps. There's a big difference in strength between the strong leg and the weak leg. We have seen results that differs up to 40% between the strong leg and the weak leg. But when skating, we do strides with every other leg. What if we were equally strong in the strong leg and the weak leg? How would that affect our skating? In our shooting tests, the difference between backhand and forehand is up to 300% in accuracy. On our camps, the difference between stick handling ability on forehand and backhand is huge. That of course affects the speed on the ice having the puck on the backhand side. All data is showing the same results. There's a big difference between the strong side and the weak side. What if that was not the case for you? How would that affect your performance in games? Another interesting perspective is if we try to anticipate how the game of hockey will develop. We have all seen the development the last five years with the speed and the mobility on the ice with players like Connor McDavid setting new standards on what to expect. We have also seen the development of the goalies, making it harder and harder to score goals and making the quick release the number one weapon in order to score more goals. Because we need to make sure the goalie doesn't have time to be in position. So doing quick releases is one of the key figures in scoring more goals. Our prediction is that this will continue. The game will, will be getting faster and faster and this means that you don't have the time to move the puck from your weak side to your strong side. You need to be able to control the puck all around your body independent on where it is. So this affects how you should train in order to become next generation of a professional hockey player. I think you all by now can agree that most players have a clear weak side. What if that was not the case for you? What if your weak side was your strong side? That would make you a special player. That would make you a player with special skills. One player that is a good example of breaking the pattern is Sidney Crosby. His back inside is almost as strong as his forehand side. So any coach coaching the players to give up the back inside on Sidney Crosby is almost the same as giving up the forehand side to any other player. This makes him a special player. Training a lot is important to become a good hockey player. But it's also important that we make sure the quality of the training is as high as possible. This means making sure that we have good habits when we train. Making sure that we have a checklist on all the important areas of the training. Our checklist for off-ice stick handling is four points according to this. Stand with your feet a little bit wider than shoulder wide apart. Always work in a skating position with knees over toes. Make sure your lower hand position is elbow from upper hand. Make sure your top hand elbow 
is away from your upper body, creating space between your upper body and the elbow. All of the drills in this tutorial will help you improve your upper body mo mobility with hockey specific drills. The upper body mobility is the most important area being able to control the puck on the backhand side and behind your body. In order to get results, repetition and stamina is crucial. Doing these exercises once or twice won't change anything. You need to repeat them two to three times a week, week after week, month after month. The time you are willing to invest in improving your skill on your weak side is in relation on the result. You need to invest time to make a change. And remember, you have the same amount of hours as Conor McDavid. It's what you do with those hours that will affect the results. The first exercise in the program is upper body rotation with your stick. You can do this exercise anywhere, anytime. You can do it before a training session or before a game or as a warm-up warm -up routine before stick cannon sessions. All you need is your stick. In order to do this exercise, put your stick on your back hip high. Rotate your upper body every other time right and left. Make sure the tip of the blade or the knob of the stick crosses the central line of your body. The central line is an imaginary line going in the middle of your upper body. Do 12 repetitions in each set. Six to the right and six to the left. Repeat in three sets. Next exercise is working with an explosive motion on your back and side. We will do this exercise both with starting with the ball in front of us as well as starting with the ball behind us. The reason that we are working in different tempos is making the training more equal to game situations. As a player, if you can slow down tempo and then explode, you will be a player that is very hard to read for any defender. Pull the ball in an explosive motion as far as possible. In this exercise, we do not need to work with the sliding bottom hand. We will pull the ball as far as possible in reference to rotating the upper body. Make sure your feet are pointing straight forward and your far knee is leaning in a little bit towards the central. Do 10 repetitions in three sets from each starting point. In total, six sets. Next exercise is working with the ball behind your body. You will do this exercise both starting on the forehand side and the backhand side. Again, we will be working in different tempos, making sure the exercise is as similar as possible to game situation, making you that creative player that is hard to read. Pull the ball in an explosive motion as far as possible. Make sure your feet are pointing forward and rotate your upper body in order to move the ball as long as possible. Do 10 repetitions in three sets from each starting point. In total, six sets. Next exercise is working with passing and receiving on your back, backhand side. Make sure your feet are pointing straight forward. You can do this exercise by yourself if you have a passer. If you don't have a passer, just use a friend or someone that can help passing the puck back to you. Start with the puck behind your body, making sure we get the power in each pass. When you follow up the pass, make sure you point the tip of the blade towards the passer or the person you're passing to. After the pass, make sure your blade is in front of your body. So when receiving the puck, you start with the blade in front of your body and you follow the puck towards behind the body, making sure you, you receive with soft hands. You can alternate this drill using a biscuit, a normal puck, or a heavy puck. It all depends on what load you want to have in the drill. Do 10 passes or 10 repetitions and do it in three sets. Next exercise is working with passing and receiving behind your body. Start with the puck behind your body with your feet pointing away from the puck. You can do this exercise by yourself if you have a passer. 
If you do not have a passer, use a friend or someone that can help you get the puck back. Start with the puck behind the foot furthest away from the passer. After passing, make sure the blade is in front of the foot closest to the passer. So when receiving the puck, we will follow the puck from the closest foot to the foot furthest away, making sure we have a soft, soft hands when receiving the puck. You can alternate this drill using a biscuit, a normal puck or a heavy puck. It all depends on what load you want to have in the drill. Make 10 passes, 10 repetitions and do it in 3 sets. Thanks for watching this video. Please do not hesitate to contact us. Our contact information is available on our website and we are happy to help you. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for more free tips and tutorials on how to develop your hockey skills.